Christopher Nolan's contagious idea about dreaming within dreams, paired with the race against time itself, was 10 years in the development and the making. And once released in 2010, clicked in all the right places. Here is an ace filmmaker, combined with a top-rate cast and expert crew, realizing his vision with pure execution, and proved himself one of the most important directors in all of modern cinema. Inception, like its director, is not just a gimmick pulled off to expensive degree, but a movie that excels at those timeless elements of storytelling. Brains, a surprising heart, and a lot of nerve. This heist movie that takes place in the deepest layers of the mind, where time and gravity don't always apply, is one of the most original and arresting films of the 21st century, and one of my personal favorite films of all time. In this modern heist film, Leonardo DiCaprio plays Cobb, a mind extractor who steals information from the subconscious of the mark with a dark and mysterious past. He is hired by a powerful businessman, played by Ken Watanabe, to perform Inception on a rival, played by Killian Murphy. Inception is the dangerous practice of planting an idea into the mark's deep subconscious instead of extracting the information from a different level of the mind. In exchange, he will wipe away Cobb's criminal history, which is seemingly tied to his dead wife. Cobb assembles a team of experienced veterans, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Tom Hardy, and a new kid on the block, played by Ellen Page. As they design the heist, and through perfect exposition, explain how the mechanics of this world work. Once inside the Mark's mind, however, things go wrong due to Cobb not being able to fully control his own issues, which may put his life and his team in mortal jeopardy. Inception is steeped and marinated in heavy concepts right out of science fiction with a dash of science fact. The idea is that the team is chemically induced into sleep and projected into the subconscious of the Mark, personified as a manufactured world, with cars and buildings and projections of people inside of it. What no one seizes on is the creativity and the fluidity of dreams, such as being able to move things and even defy gravity when it is not present. That's as really deep as I want to go because, A, I want you all to watch this movie, and B, Nolan's screenplay sets all this up both visually and through great exposition for us to fully understand what he's doing. So talking about the full breadth of it, and by that method, trivializing the matter, is something I really don't want to do. What I can talk about at reasonable length is the astonishing visuals Nolan employs to bring his dream to vivid life. He was pushing himself further as a filmmaker, and his visions began to flourish with deeper and richer imagery. Much of the richness in the visuals for Inception was the genius camera work of the great Wally Pfister, who served as Nolan's director of photography from Memento to The Dark Knight Rises. The two carefully craft the different levels of dreaming by using carefully chosen lighting schemes and colors for each which helps the viewer know where and what each level is every time we cut from one to the other. These colors, as well as a clean, steady frame, even in handheld shots, give moments like the tilting bar and rotating hallway incredible visceral impact and just a great image all around. Small wonder then that Pfister finally won an Oscar for his incredible work on this film. To portray the world Nolan intended, he and production designer Guy Hendricks Dias, in collaboration with effects supervisors Paul Franklin and Chris Corbold, designed many of the sets on rotating centrifuges and tilting mechanisms. Old school technology employed famously by Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Here, they are brilliantly executed to create high standards of stunts and use the camera creatively to capture the fluidity of dreams. For example, in the famous hallway shot, at some points the camera is handheld, and we see Arthur and the thugs try to hold on as the van turns sharply. But when the van flips over, gravity no longer exists, and therefore the camera is fixed to the ground to give one of the coolest shots in movie history. And on the tilted set, it's all to give the water bending illusions a more subtle way of capturing the danger of going to the lower levels. 
I must make mention of the practical nature of both the sets and the visual effects. Instead of using heavy CGI, Nolan opts for more practical things, such as wire work, practical explosions, and models. In this way, the verisimilitude of Inception is even more so, because the look of the film, in combination with the sets and the effects, are seamless, and very rarely give away scale or taking you right out of the movie. Frequent Nolan composer Hans Zimmer, fresh off the first two Dark Knight films, composes the score for Inception. Using loud orchestrals, he paints a picture of a high-stakes thriller, at which point anything could go very wrong, keeping us on the edge of our seats. His heavy use of horns blaring, which has unfortunately been parodied since, is actually a part of the inception process itself. In the context of the story, Nolan chooses the way of warning the team to wake up, is using a song by Edith Piaf, Non je ne regrette rien, which itself features loud horns blaring. It's meant both as a homage and slowed down versions of the horn blasts in the song as the sound travels lower and lower in the multiple subconsciouses. This score is absolutely flawless in execution and composing. And a personal favorite track of mine, Time, is a choice contender for the best track that Hans Zimmer ever wrote. It's just a simple masterpiece and helps end the story on a perfect note. The sets and effects help tell the story of a heist inside the mind. But without convincing performances or well-written characters, the movie would be irredeemably crippled. Each of the team has a specific part to play in the mission, and Nolan has admitted that he very much based the characters off film crew positions, which does make a lot of sense and probably subliminally helps the audience in a way. In a genius screenplay move, Cobb must recruit a new architect for the mission, and recruits Ariadne, played by Ellen Page, and must school her in the art of going into dreams, and what she, and therefore the rest of the team, can or cannot do. She is our avatar, and she provides a surprising human edge to the movie that I'll discuss when we go more into Cobb's own issues and some of the deeper meaning of Inception. Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Arthur, Cobb's right-hand man who seems to know all about Cobb's problems, but doesn't seem to mind it too much as it's his job to facilitate one of the levels and keep the team in check. It's also hinted he may be a playboy in one scene, and it's a nice little touch for us. Tom Hardy plays Eames, the group's actor who is there to further trick the mark in one of the levels. Eames is a very lively character, and Hardy is a breath of fresh air, as usual. The Mark is Fisher, played by the vastly underrated Killian Murphy, who along with Paige brings a solid emotional core to the story. Marion Cotillard plays Maul, a projection of Cobb's dead wife and former partner, who haunts the missions like a ghost, and serves as a cathartic character in the grand scheme of the movie. Character actors Dilip Rao, Tom Berenger, and Pete Postlethwaite perform their character functions extremely well. And of course, it wouldn't be a Nolan movie without Michael Caine, who has a short but welcome cameo. Inception stands apart in many regards to Nolan's other filmography, because of how well the emotional element of the story is executed. Cobb's deceased wife literally haunts his dreams due to a secret he has locked away deep in limbo, the lowest and near inescapable level of the subconscious. Ariadne is the only one to ever question his motives and tries to uncover the truth so he can regain himself from his lost dream. Part of inception in the storytelling is installing catharsis into the Mark's mind, which will lock the idea into place. As the leader of the Khan, Cobb should be the most assured one, and he is far from it. It adds an element of danger as well as tragedy as he wants his old life back and for a long time can't go back as hard as he tries. His own grip on reality is slipping away, which manifests itself not only in Maul's appearances, but other visual cues, like his children running out of his vision, or a freight train barging onto a busy city street. Christopher Nolan, as a filmmaker, is often criticized for lacking empathy for his characters and not giving them proper attention compared to its visuals. First of all, 
This is completely wrong, as he has an excellent grasp on characterization through his dialogue and his rapport with his actors. The characters are rich in dimension and personality. If they weren't, this film would have fallen flat on its face and there'd be nothing to the story at all. By the climax of the film, Cobb's dream world is literally crumbling into dust, and he does realize he must move forward in a beautifully acted, cathartic moment with DiCaprio and Cotillard. This is also in parallel to Murphy's arc in the film, even though he's being manipulated into doing so by our characters, that he must carve his own path after a cathartic moment with his dead father. This element can be missed on first viewing, but the subtlety is there. And much like Stanley Kubrick, Nolan allows the viewer to find it with every subsequent viewing. You would think that such an original idea as Inception would be showered with accolades, and in particular, Nolan's direction and screenplay would be rewarded. There were indeed many nominations for this film from multiple organizations, including eight Oscar nominations. Shockingly, very shockingly, Nolan was snubbed for Best Director, a move that baffles me to this day. At the Oscar ceremony, the film rightly won both sound Oscars, visual effects, and the one award that made me very, very happy that evening, Wally Pfister for Best Cinematography. I remember rooting for Inception and The Social Network big time that night, and my jaw dropped in shock when both these magnificent films lost the key awards to this. <clears throat> God, I hate that movie. Despite the fact that Nolan got screwed on that particular Oscar night, it's undeniable that Inception is still an amazing classic even without winning the top Oscar prizes. Inception set a bar much higher for Christopher Nolan than ever before, and he continues to push the bar higher not only for himself, but for cinema. This is on the top shelf of films for me, so to speak, as it was one of those truly great influential films that has inspired me to pursue filmmaking dreams of my own. I'll get nowhere near such films, but the aspiration remains the same. It has a great script, great visuals, great acting, and a surprising amount of heart. Inception is a masterclass of filmmaking. My final ranking, 10 out of 10.